time, we're going to talk about using tables in WordPress. Your table icons are located on the last row usually. They might be in a different place for you, but quite often you'll see them here. If you're only seeing two rows of icons in this upper portion, remember that you can always expand it by clicking on the Hide Show Kitchen Sink. All right. We have a sample page here that's got three paragraphs in it. And normally we prefer to just have regular text rather than have it be in tables because search engines prefer it that way. However, there are times when you really do need or want a table for tabulated data, or maybe you want to, in a team section, put a picture on the left and have the text consistently on the right with a nice clean edge to it. Tables can help you do that. Let's take a look at this one and we'll insert a paragraph break. Your insert table icon is right here. We click on it and we're going to start with two columns and four rows. All right. Quite often Flight, if, you're, if it's a table you're going to use regularly, Flight may have given you a class to assign to it. If that's the case, you would choose from this drop-down menu. They'll tell you what the name of it is. In this particular sample, we're not going to assign a class to the table. Instead, we're going to put in a cell padding of 15 so that we have a little space around each image and text and a little space to work in. We can set the width of the table. In this case, I'm going to set it to 100% because we have quite a bit of content here. And I could, on a narrower table, set it to align to the center or the left or the right. Left or right, the text would wrap around it. But since we have so much content that's going to go into the table, we don't need to set that in this case. So here's our table. You can see the little guidelines here for where to put things. And let's say that you wanted to have a longer title at the very top. And because it's a title on the table, perhaps you don't want it to wrap in the first column. One of the things we can do, now that we've put the table in, a lot of other options have become available to us. So I'm going to select this top row and I'm going to merge these two cells together so that a title can run across the top of both columns. And I'll do that. This works best, by the way, when the table cell is empty. And this icon here will merge the table cells together. I click on it and you can see that it's now one row. I'll insert my text. and text that you insert, you have all the same options that you do on non-table items. And so I can take the bold off or make it bold and if I want to I can give it a heading 2 and now it's a larger heading and it runs across both columns because I merged the column. If I decide I really want two separate headings, one over each column, then I can either go with the original two cells or if I've already merged the cell I can go here and split the merge table cells back again. So now I have a cell here and I'll put in content here and now we have two headers one over the first column one over the second column and now I can go here and take the paragraph text. I'm using the keyboard shortcut on this one to copy it and paste it in. Sometimes things jump around a little bit here. And on the next one I'll use the menu to copy. I'm going to hit the delete to take it out and then I'll put my cursor in the second row, second cell, and go back up 
and paste that in. And one more time. Okay. So now we have a couple of headers and we have text in the cells in our right column. Now, if we wanted pictures next to these, I can click in the cell that I want the picture in. And let's put in an image. I could upload it from my computer, but we already have a few in our media library. So let's use those. And I'll choose this one. And maybe a little smaller size. So I'm going to go with the thumbnail and insert that into the post. And there's my first picture. I'll put my cursor in the next cell down. Choose the next picture and insert that into the post. You'll notice I'm using the thumbnails on each of these and that helps it to be a consistent size image. You don't have to do that. You can put your picture in at full size. Okay, let's update this page and take a quick look and view the page. These are heading to I don't care for the look of that, so we'll go back and we'll change those. But you'll see that the pictures and the text have centered themselves by default. And I'd prefer to have the picture start at the top where the text does. So I'm going to go back into my page again and edit it. Clean things up a little bit. Did not care for this as a heading two, so let's try it as a heading four. It can be paragraph text. It can be any kind of text you would use if you were not in a table. That part does not matter. Now, we decided that we were going to have all of the cells align both pictures and text at the top. So I've put my cursor in one of the cells and the third icon over lets me edit table cell properties. So I'm going to click on that. And vertical alignment is not currently set. So we're going to choose top alignment so that everything aligns up at the top of the cell. And I'm not just going to update this current cell. In this case, I want to update all the cells in the table. So I'll choose that. I'll click on update. Hold save that. Let's take a look at it. And now you can see the pictures align, mostly align with the top of the text. We've got some different pictures in here that I think may have some existing space in the picture. All right, let's go back and edit that page because I can see that I have an extra little space right here. Watch for details like this because they will be noticed by visitors. So I'm going to take that extra little space out and I'm going to look at here and ah, there's that extra space we were seeing. There we go. And that cleans up that a little bit. Now that we've gotten this far, let's say that we have a new person joined our team and we need another row in the table. Placing my cursor in the cell, I'm going to go up here and you can see that the next two icons here, one when you hover over it says insert, insert row before and the next says insert row after. We're going to be adding a row at the bottom so we'll insert row after and you can see that put a new row in here. Now we don't have a photo for this so the photo is coming soon. I encourage you not to do coming soon things, but this is just for the purpose of our sample. Let's copy a little text here just uh, for our sample, and we'll put that in there and update it. Now 
We'll view the page. And you can see that we now have our table has a fourth row. And perhaps your change is not to add in a row, but there is some reason that you want to take that extra row out. All you need to do is put your cursor anywhere in the row. Go up to the icons and you'll see that the one that has the little red bar and the arrow coming out lets you delete the row. We do that and now that row is gone and we can update it and have our revised table. So just to cover a few things again, the first icon inserts the table. Once you have the table inserted, you'll have choices of changing table row or table cell properties, adding or adding rows at the top or adding rows at the bottom of the cell your cursor is in, taking a row away. You can also add a column at the beginning or at the end of your table, or you can take a column out. You can merge two table cells together, or you can split the merge cells back again. And that is how you handle tables.